What's happening, y'all? Welcome in. Rivals down south, T-Bob and AJ McCarron. All right, let's flip the script, boys. I like that we're spreading our wings. I never thought that I would hear someone defend Akron, Ohio. And let's also be clear on that last point, Jake. Okay, Mark Stoops, like you said, okay, $8 million a year for basically eight wins a year. He has made a master class of scheduling bad teams to stack wins. It's one of the reasons why he didn't want to go to nine SEC games. I am not a big Mark Stoops fan. So yeah, that strength schedule is awful. He's not that good. All right. Yeah. So forget about your blind resumes. We won't even mention national championships. I want to have a quick little playoff conversation with y'all. Okay. Um, and it, it, it comes down to two teams that are not in the SEC right now, but we saw play on Saturday in the Red River rivalry. And let's play with a little hypothetical. Uh, let's say that Georgia emerges out of the SEC. They feel like the only playoff worthy team in that conference right now. Let's say that Michigan emerges uh, out of the Big Ten. Now, granted, Big Ten maybe has a couple. We'll see. Um, and then let's say you get somebody finally go undefeated in the Pac-12. They have to be in there. The Pac-12 is awesome this year. What happens if it comes down at the end of the year and you have an undefeated Florida State that's the <laughs> ACC champs, an undefeated Oklahoma that's the Big 12 champs, who would be the final team? And, Jake, we'll start with you. Who do you think? Yeah, I'm going to just go with Oklahoma. Um, one, I think they're actually, if I had to bet, I would say Oklahoma's more likely to, to for this scenario to play out. So I like them in that instance. A huge win last week against Texas. That's a big step forward. Now, really, they got Kansas as another, is their next biggest challenge. But the, the biggest thing for Oklahoma is they're going to have to most likely beat Texas again. Yes. And that's a team that yes. the voters have loved all season going back to preseason. So it wouldn't be just once. It would be just it would then be twice. And to beat a good team twice, there's something to be said about that. So if they run the table and say they beat Texas again in the Big 12 championship, it's going to be hard for the voters to keep out Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Joshua. I, said, I think it's, it's interesting. I would agree with you there. And, and what's hard for Florida State, like I think the ACC might be a better conference than people give credit for, but their mm -hmm. win against LSU is not looking as good as it once did. And, uh, you know, they struggled with BC. The win over Clemson, we don't know what that's going to be by the end of the year. I just look at Oklahoma, and I think a lot of people get caught up in stories as well. This is a great defense that wasn't very good last year. They were like second to last in the Big 12, and now uh, phenomenal on defense, probably the reason why they won that game against Texas. And I think if they could beat Texas two times in one year, um, having that little uh, endorsement of beating one of the big brands of college football, I think gets the uh, committee to be on their side. AJ, I mentioned the potential of getting two Big Ten teams in, and then I threw a little subtle shade at Alabama calling UGA the only playoff caliber team in the SEC this year. What do you think, AJ? Are you tied? Do you think they have a do you think they have a chance at this thing to end up in that final four? I mean, there's always a chance, right? Like, I mean, i I think the playoff situation this year is gonna be different than what it's been in the past because I think not only – so if Alabama beats Georgia, if Georgia goes undefeated all the way to the SEC championship, Alabama somehow beats Georgia, then you're talking about two SEC teams being in there. But I also would say you have an argument for two, you know, Big 12 teams being in, Oklahoma mm -hmm. and Texas. If Oklahoma mm -hmm. goes undefeated and loses in the Big 12 championship to Texas, you also have an argument for two Pac-12 teams being in it. Um, and I would say th those three conferences have more of an argument right now uh, with USC and Oregon uh, being out in the Pac-12 than, uh, you know, the Big Ten having two teams. T-Bob, well, can, I, I, can mean, I share with you my yeah. nightmare scenario real quick? And, and yes. I want to get your yes. opinion on this. So I, I do. I, I, I agree, AJ. There's a high degree of likelihood we're looking at a, a, a number of teams with one loss with a strong case. So let's just assume it's that. Let's assume it's Alabama and Georgia playing for the SEC championship. And let's assume Georgia's undefeated up until this point. And then Alabama beats them. Is there any – I mean, I could just feel the stink in the air and having to talk to you guys if they put both teams in there. <laughs> Is there any chance that they, they leave Georgia out if they lose in this case? I would hope that they would, but that's me personally. I hate when two teams from any conference make it. Like, when you're talking about a four-team playoff, I want that to be uh, essentially – a, a tournament of champions, right? I want teams that won their conference then facing off to win a championship. I understand 
why Ohio State made it last year. I understand the reasoning behind why multiple SEC teams made it this year. But, like, to me, uh, as, as as we prepare to move on to the 12-team playoff, like, if, if in this final year you could have four of the five conference champions, you know, all of these, the, these regional powers meeting up in this final national tournament, like, to me, that is – that's the ideal. So I don't want two for the Big Ten. I don't want two from the SEC. I, I want one from each. All right, boys. Real, uh, real, qu Josh, real quick. Go ahead. Jake, Jake you, you can't ask T-Bob that. And I love T-Bob, but he has nightmares at night about two teams from the same conference being in there, okay? Because okay, okay. he doesn't have good okay. memories from, from the national championship years ago. <laughs> okay. That's aggressive. That's aggressive. Because, yes, I have literal football PTSD from that. Uh, and we're actually going to touch on it. On the end of today's rival down south, I'm going to grill AJ about why he did to me what he did to me. But, Joshua, Jake, we got to let y'all go. Thank you so much. Red corner, blue corner, y'all the best. And uh, we'll catch up with y'all later. All righty. All right, fellas. Appreciate All right, so check it out. We mentioned going from 4 to 12. This is what a 12-team playoff looks like right now. Um, you'll have your sixth highest-ranked conference champions. That's your Power 5 and the highest-ranked group of five uh, member. And then you'll have six at-large bids given out. Now, obviously, this is becoming a bit flawed because one of the Power 5 conferences is not going to be such anymore. Like, the Pac-12 will not be worthy of that automatic bid. I'm someone who thinks it's very simple. Okay. Give the highest ranked power four conference champions a bid, give the group of five a bid, and then just go to seven at large instead of six. I, I, you know, I never doubted people's ability to make it over complicated. AJ, I know you have some feelings though on this 12 team playoff. You, I, I believe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, are like, are you a fan of expanding to 12? No, I, I'm not, not at all. I, I, I don't know what problem you solve by adding more teams right i mean college football has gone through these eras of trying to problem solve and nothing has worked out in, in their favor um the bcs era you know they did it all off of uh you know algorithms and figuring out who played the toughest schedules and stuff like that and then whoever was number three always complained oh well we didn't get in we should have been in so then they move into the college football playoff era. All right, we're going to take the top four teams. And then all of a sudden, whoever's fifth or sixth is crying and making an argument on, oh, well, we should have been in. We only had one loss. How does this team with one loss get in? And we don't get in. Like, by expanding, what are you solving? Because, okay, us going to 12 teams, and, and we think it's going to solve this whole huge problem that we've had for years – all of a sudden, now whoever's 13th or 14th or 15th is going to be complaining that they should have been in. So at what point do we stop expanding and just stick with one deal and say, listen, win your games. If you win your games, you don't have an issue and you don't have to cry about possibly getting in. Like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. So there is a, look, there is a wonderful simplicity to what you were talking about. Absolutely. Keep it simple stupid win your games you win the championship it's all good i agree also that like yeah you think it's tough to discern between four and five <laughs> good luck sorting like okay like right now let's just let's just do by the ap poll we'll just go to 12 even though the technically it's not exactly how this would work like north carolina's 12 old miss is 13 louisville's 14 oregon state's 15 utah 16 Duke said, these are all teams that feel relatively even with one another. So I feel all you right. like sorting through that mess is going to be a disaster. But there's a couple truths here. One is that TV rules college football now. Look no further than the playoff expansion and everything else, right? What this is going to create is a lot of badass big time TV matchups. Right, like, like, what if you got to see uh, USC play Oklahoma right now in Norman? Like, everybody's watching that game. We're all fired up for the game. And and look, I also think there's something to be said of when it was the BCS, and you really did have a third best team in the country that felt like I wanted a shot. Like, I kind of believe that team maybe did have a legitimate chance at winning. Now, the 12th best team, like. If you're if you're if you're right now, let's say you get left on the outside, you're Ole Miss looking in. I don't know that I believe Ole Miss is capable of winning Natty. So like, I'm not going to hear those complaints as much. So uh, I'm a fan of the expansion simply because 
I want more big, badass football games. And I do think whoever manages to survive this gauntlet will feel like a very um a very satisfactory championship. Like like I feel like that champion will have earned it on the field ultimately. No, I, I mean I, I totally agree with you, T Bob. Like, listen, money rules everything. Uh NCAA for since the the start of it has been all about money and that's just the way it goes um they are gonna figure out a way to get their their dollar at the end of the day um and i'm 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 fine with you know from a business standpoint you know expanding but at what point do we say all right how many how many games are these kids going to play on top of that? Mm-hmm. I also think you're going to run into an issue of more and more guys sitting out when it comes to the college football playoffs. Like guys that are guaranteed first round picks, I think you're going to run into more and more guys that choose to sit out. Hey, we probably don't have a chance to win. We're getting in as the 10th seed, whatever. Like why why risk it? Like, I'm going to have to play all these extra games. There's no reason. I'm a guaranteed first-round pick. So I really think you're going to see that issue start to, you know, uh, creep up. I could see – I could still – I could see that going either way. I could see maybe more guys in theory sticking around because they feel like they have a chance. But but I'm with you, right? Like, why would I expose myself to three games extra potentially of wear and tear if no, if if, if they're going to be the 12 seed or I, I do think for bowl season that we've already seen bowl opt outs really start to catch on. Like, I think that's going to just, you know, this is going to exacerbate that situation, but Hey man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for, I'm, I'm, a, I'm here for the big games and, and yeah, I want to see like random matchups like Texas and Oregon and Eugene. Like I, I just, I'm just a sucker. Like I'm the I'm the John I'm the Mark the NCAA walks into the bar and they know they can sucker me into taking them up to my room I am the Mark I'm aware and I'm fine with it it is what it is all right when we get back speaking of being the Mark we got to talk about Mark Stoops man um he said the quiet part out loud and in doing so I think displayed some real bad leadership we'll talk about it next here on Rivals Down South. <laughs> 